views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. But they should. Everybody should agree with the views that we're expressing because they come right from God's Word. So glad you're with us tonight, hey friends. James Offer here with you, uh, Word from the Lord, and you can reach me at 276-340-2653. Uh, that's my phone number, uh, wordlord at gmail.com is how you can uh, contact me, and uh, we uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, as I said, uh, we've got some, uh, been getting a lot of phone calls and uh, emails from people from around the, the world, you might say. As we mentioned last week, we had a man call from uh, Canada and uh, individuals that are, uh, are going to try to be watching from uh, out in California tonight, so hopefully... That's, uh, that's possible. Hope they're watching that. Uh, you can go to uh, starnewsource.com live, click the live link, and uh, it should be up and running. So we hope that you'll do that. If you have any, uh, you missed any programs, you can go to uh, A Word from the Lord with James Oldfield on YouTube. Uh, just search that, A Word from the Lord James Oldfield, and it'll pop up there, and you can watch archived videos. I know Caleb was talking about archived uh, lessons um, tonight if you, if you missed those. And so, Anything that we have, friends, we want you to know we're, we're glad to, to uh, give those away. Muscle and shovel. Uh, haven't, uh, I don't have a, a picture of that, but muscle and shovel. If you'd like a book, a copy of the muscle and shovel, uh, we'll be glad to get that to you. A uh, lady called me up the other day, and she said, uh, I'm wanting a copy of that muscle and shovel. And I and, uh, said, okay. So we took her one out. And so we hope that you, if you'd like a, a, a copy of that book, uh, very interesting read. Easy read. It's not a hard read. At all, uh, uh, good, uh, you know, good sized print. So it's not a hard book at all to read. So hope that you'll <clears throat> uh, take advantage of that, friends. Everything we have is free. The gospel's free. Uh, all it costs you is a little time to uh, study it and uh, determine to, to uh, uh, give yourself to it and to the study of God's word, and it'll be time well spent. That is for sure and for certain. So, uh, word of the Lord at gmail.com is how you can reach me, 276-340-2653. And uh, we'll be glad to uh, have a Bible study with you, email study with you, however it may be. First tonight, I, I don't know if you've ever thought about uh, what people say or, or uh, when they say things like this, but we get it all the time, and it's one of those things, uh, catch words that we uh, hear all the time. When we hear something, that is contrary to the Bible, our ears automatically prick up. <clears throat> and we want to know if it in fact is the case. I and mean, if you hear something that sounds too good to be true, uh, the old saying is it, it probably is. And if you hear something that is contrary or sounds strange, sounds uh, uh, maybe something you hadn't heard before, all you have to say is prove it. You know, you go check for yourself. You, you find out if, it, if it's in fact true are not. And that's really the attitude that we want you to have. We want you to have this attitude of we're checking out what is true or not true. Now look at this. For example, in 1 Kings chapter 10, 1 Kings 10 and verse 1, the Bible, uh, we're going to read about uh, Solomon and uh, the, the queen of Sheba. Now the Bible says in 1 Kings 10, let me get my program open here. 1 Kings 10 and verse 1. When the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, right, concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. She came to make sure that, you know, is this really, is this really the case? I've heard a lot about this man. I've heard he's, he's really wise. I've heard of his riches, of, I've heard of all the glory and everything, but I'm going to come and, and test him. I'm put him to the test, prove him with hard questions. Now, that's exactly what we're saying. You need to prove individuals that are telling you something from the Bible, and, and that's why, friends, we open the phone lines up. You know, uh, and I know we get people that call and they try to trip us up. They're trying to, they're trying to catch us in a, a lie or, 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 or a contradiction, you know, I remember one man called in and he was telling me what, you know, this is what Johnny said. Johnny said that if you, was, if you were uh, going to be a preacher, you had to be married. No, that's not what Johnny said, you know. Well, I knew what the man was saying, uh, but see, he wasn't saying it right. And 
what it, what it was, Johnny had been talking about elders and pastors. And an elder or a pastor or a bishop, as the Bible says, has to be the husband of one wife. So you have to be married to be a pastor or an elder or a bishop. But the man was saying, <clears throat> preacher. Well, a preacher is not necessarily a pastor. A preacher is someone who preaches. He, he might be a pastor. He might be the elder. might be one of the elders or one of the bishops. But just to be a preacher, you don't have to be married. And so the, I knew right then that here's, here was someone trying, trying to trip us up, trying to, trying to have, find a contradiction. But his language was giving him away, see? It's because I said prove it. You know, let's, let's prove if what you're saying is true or not. Well, the queen of Sheba, she comes to Solomon, she says, prove it. Let's find out if it's true or not. Well, look at 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 9 and verse 1. 2 Chronicles 9 and verse 1. Now, here's, here's another uh, account of this. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, who uh, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company and uh, camels that... Uh, let's see, camels that bear spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. Uh, and when she was uh, come to Solomon, she communed with him all that was in her heart. And then she found out, you know, verse, verse 2, and Solomon told her all her questions, and there was nothing hid from Solomon which he told her not. Verse 3, and when the queen of Sheba had... Uh, seeing the wisdom of, of Solomon and the house that he had built and the house he had built and the meat of his, of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and, and their apparel and his cupbearers and so forth, uh, she, said, uh, she said to the king, it was true, it was a true report which I heard in mine own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom, howbeit I believed not their words until I came and mine eyes have seen it and behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me. All right? She says, so I came to see for myself. Friends, we don't mind you come seeing for yourself. We, we don't mind you coming and examining for yourself. As a matter of fact, that's what we want you to do. We want you to do that very thing. You want to find out what, what the, uh, uh, our worship is like? Come find out for yourself. You know, come, come find out what it's like. Just prove it out. Check it out for yourself. Now, friends, there's another reason why you need to check things out. It's because sometimes people get their proof, you might say. They get, people fr uh, they get it from feelings. When people tell us what God told me, God said to me, God appeared to me, we say, prove it. We want you to prove it. We want to demonstrate it because individuals who are going by feelings and they say, well, God told me because I felt it. Well, friends, we want you to prove that. I, I want you to demonstrate that and prove to it because feelings are not a good standard to go by. In other words, you just can't go by feelings and say, well, I know something true because I, I felt it was right. Listen, you, your feelings can deceive you. I want you to read it with me, if you would, in Genesis 27 and verse 12. Genesis 27, and we're going to start in verse 12. Here's Isaac. Now, Isaac, we'll paraphrase the story here. Isaac is, uh, is about blind. He's blind. And he's got two sons, uh, uh, Jacob and Esau. Esau's the older one, he, so therefore he's supposed to get the, uh, the blessing. Uh, he's already sold his birthright <clears throat> to Jacob. And so Jacob comes in, and uh, he's going to trick his father into giving him this blessing. And so, verse, uh, so Rebecca, his wife, his mother, Rebecca, uh, uh, the mother says, "Well, you go kill a kid, kill a, uh, a goat, young goat. I'll make some stew. I'll make some venison, some pottage, and we'll take it, and we'll put your brother's clothes on, and we'll put the skin of the." of the goat on your hair, on your hand, arms, and the back of your neck, and then, and then you can trick your father. Notice this, verse 12. My, he says, My father peradventure will fill me, and I shall seem to him a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. Verse 13. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go and fetch, uh, and go and fetch me them. And he went... <clears throat> Excuse me. And fashion brought them to his mother, and his mother made a savory meat 
such as his father uh, loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which, uh, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son, verse, verse uh, 16. And she got the skins of the kids of the goats uh, upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck, and she gave the savory meat and the bread, which uh, she prepared unto the uh, hand of her son Jacob. Now, verse uh, 18, and it came to pass. As uh, he went unto his father and said, My father, he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have, uh, uh, I have done according as thou baddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, uh, that thou may uh, bless me. Verse 20, And Isaac said unto him, How is it thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord God has brought, brought it to me. Verse 21, And Isaac said uh, unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. So he's already suspicious. And Jacob went near unto him, uh, went near unto his father, and uh, he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not. Because his hands, <clears throat> he discerned not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. And so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he uh, brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine and he drank. Verse 24, uh, verse 26, sorry. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and he kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, uh, See, I smell, uh, the, uh, see the smell of my son is the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. And so, uh, anyway, so Jacob uh, tricks Esau because his feelings, he felt his skin. He felt his skin. It felt hairy. The back of the neck, it felt hairy. His, uh, the smell, he smelled like his son. So everything is telling him this is Jacob because he listened to his voice, but everything else is telling him, no, this is really, this is really Esau. He just sounds like Jacob. So his senses tricked him. Now, friends, that's my whole point. He trusted in his feelings and went ahead and blessed Jacob. And we know how the story goes. Jacob then was blessed. Esau was upset and crying uh, because he didn't get a blessing. So my point is, friends, a lie can feel just as real as the truth. You can hear a lie and it will, it, it will invoke the feelings Strong feelings, just as much as the truth. Here's another example. <clears throat> in Genesis 37, sorry, in Genesis 37, in verse 31, now we have uh, Jacob. I find it very interesting. Now, shoes on the other foot. Now, he's going to be tricked. In Genesis 37, 31, now Jacob's old, and we know about Joseph and the coat of many colors. Jacob loved uh, 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 Joseph, gave him a coat of many colors. His brothers were jealous. They killed, they, uh, they, they took the, the coat, sold Joseph into Egypt, in Egyptian bondage, took the coat, put uh, uh, blood on it, and uh, now they're going to treat their father. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought they brought it uh, to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it is thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and upon his loins. And he mourned for his sons many days and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. 
And he said, For I will go down into the grave to my son's uh, mourning. Thus his father thus his father wept for him. And the Midianite sold, uh, sold him into Egypt. All right. So anyway, uh, so he's, he's wept for him. So thus his father wept for him. So now Jacob is feeling the reality of the fact that he believes an animal has killed his son and slain him and rid him asunder, all because of what he saw. He saw something and he said, hey, my son has written, uh, written pieces. A wild beast has devoured him. He's dead. You know, he's never coming back. And he's drawing all these conclusions upon a torn, bloody coat. Now, friends, my point is a lie can feel real. It can feel as real as the truth. It may even feel realer than the truth. Is that a word? It can feel more real than the truth. So here's what we're going to discern. Is it true? Is it fact or feeling? Is what you're believing, is what you're feeling, is it really truth? I mean, if one person feels they are saved, does that mean that all persons who have a similar feelings are saved? Now, now, just hold on to that for a minute. Just think about it. If everybody has feelings and everybody has a similar feeling, does that mean they're saved? I want you to think about something. Do you realize that the word feel is only used in the Bible? Feel or feelings only used in the Bible nine times. It's never given as a standard of being saved or not. You say, well, I have these feelings. I have these I have, I have these feelings that they sure feel real, so therefore I think I'm saved. Listen, Jeremiah 17, verse 9, Jeremiah says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Man, your heart will trick you. The heart can deceive you. Proverbs 28 and verse 26. Proverbs 28 and verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Friends, if you're trusting in, well, I feel, I think, I believe, I, I had a premonition, I had a warm, fuzzy feeling, had goosebumps, had chill, had a, you know, uh, broke out in a sweat, whatever. I, you're basically on all those on feelings. Friends, feelings can deceive you. Feelings can mislead you. And so the feeling... You know, the feeling may be real, but that doesn't mean the result is real. Because feelings, you know, the feeling may, may in fact be real. You may have this, you know, this feel, warm feeling in your stomach, and you may have these goosebumps or chill bumps or whatever it is. You may have this feeling. But the facts, but the facts is what you ought to be concerned with. And if the facts contradict the feeling, then you need to put the feelings aside and go with the facts. Matter of fact, you should always go with the facts. You should always go with the things that you know are true and not feelings because feelings are not the standard for determining, for determining the truth. But yet we have people all the time that say, I know I'm saved based upon a feeling. I know I'm saved based upon a feeling. I want you to listen to this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this, uh, this caller. Get my... They know, now they're going to stay, they're going to say that they know about salvation based upon John 3, 16. So I'll get it to play here. Friends, you can't always go on, on feelings. I'm not sure. That or do you have to repent? Yes, you do. So you repent. But you said, where did it say that you can get saved without baptism? That's right. Now, well, I, I quoted it. John 3.16 didn't say get saved without baptism. Didn't, well, what did it say? It said, he that believeth shall not perish. That's right. But what? About, can you get saved without repenting? No, you repent what? before you get saved. I mean, okay, listen. Okay, now wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It always happens, friends. 
I, people call in with John 3.16. And they want to say their salvation without baptism. But you know what? If that salvation without baptism, that salvation without repentance. Now, ma'am, is are you going to tell me that you can be saved without repentance? No. Then you where is repentance in John 3.16? Now, this lady wasn't talking about feelings, but she was insisting on facts that just weren't there. Now, friends, I can assure you that her feeling based upon John 3.16 was, if you just believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, whoso believeth in him shall not perish, may everlasting life, John 3.16. Her feelings were, that's what you need. Not, not anything else. And nothing else added to it. Now, my question is simply this. Were those facts, were those facts or were those feelings? When someone tells me that all you need to do, all you need to know to be saved is John 3.16. That tells me they're going on something other than facts because I know, I know what the facts are. And the facts say that there are other things that are necessary for salvation more than just believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. She said, well, it's not baptism because it's not in John 3.16. Well, repent's not in John 3.16 either. So if we're going to exclude everything essential to be, uh, being essential to salvation that's not in John 3, 16, we're going to have to exclude a whole lot of stuff because there's a whole lot that's not in John 3, 16. See? So my question is, do you know something about being saved based upon facts or is it just feelings? Because if it's based upon facts, then you can have faith that it is true. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Friends, any time you say, well, I believe, I believe, I believe, I have feelings, whatever, it needs to be based upon the facts of the Bible. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, I can have a feeling that something is true or not, but if I can't base it up by facts, then it's not by faith. And so, we're, we're, we're concerned about individuals who are believing things that they feel, but yet they're contrary to the facts. Now, here's how misleading it can be. Now, the lady we just listened to, <clears throat> she's saying John 3.16, because it says believe on Jesus, right? Whoso believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, in her mind, John 3.16 is what you need. That's all you need because John 3.16 says it. Well, that's, that's true. But I want to give you an example of an individual who heard something from God's Word and yet when he heard something else from God's Word, he said, well, I'm going to take this and not this. In other words, in, in the ascent, he was going to say, I'm taking one verse and not the other verse. Now, the person I'm talking about is Ahab. I'm talking about Ahab. In... Uh, <clears throat> in 1 Kings 21, verses 18 and 19. 1 Kings 21, verses 18 and 19. All right? We have a... Uh, get my... 1 Kings 21, verse 18. All right. God tells... God is, uh, uh, is, is, is giving some information to Elijah, all right? And he's going to say, now, you go down and meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he's in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he has gone down to possess it. Now, Ahab has, actually Jezebel had Naboth killed, so Ahab could take, his, uh, take over his vineyard. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and hast taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, in the place where the in the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall the dogs lick thy blood, even thine. Alright? So, so Elijah goes down and he tells he tells Ahab, God says. In the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, 
They're going to lick your blood. All right? So, I'm sure that, that shook old uh, Elijah up a little bit. I mean, knowing where you're going to die, right? That's what he heard. Dog's going to lick your blood. He knew what happened to Nabal. I mean, his wicked wife Jezebel killed him. So he knew what happened to Nabal, and he knew why the dogs licked his blood, because he died. And so he's hearing Elijah tell him, you're going to die in Samaria, Jezreel. You're going, to, you're going to die. You're going to die in the same place. The dogs are going to lick your blood. That's what he's hearing. That's what he's hearing. Now, later on, later on, we come to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22, Ahab and Jehoshaphat want to go to battle. Now, Jehoshaphat's the king of, of the southern kingdom, Judah. Ahab's king of the northern kingdom, Israel. And they're, they're going to go out to do battle. And they and Jehoshaphat says, well, we need to hear something from God here. We need to hear, is there a word from the Lord? And we need to find someone that's going to tell us the truth on this. All right? So they bring in Micaiah. Now, Micaiah is not, I mean, he, he's, he's known to be a prophet of God. But, you know, he's not Elijah. I mean, how many people have heard of Elijah? And how many people have heard of Micaiah? So they bring in Micaiah. <clears throat> and let's look at 1 Kings. First Kings, chapter 22, and verse 19. All right. So Micaiah says, Hear thou therefore uh, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, uh, and all the host of heaven standing uh, by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, well, I'm, I got ahead of myself here. Sorry about that. Let's go back to verse 19. Go back up to verse 19 here. I mean, verse 14, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord said to me that I will speak. And he came to the king... <clears throat> And he came to the king and said unto him, <clears throat> and said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? Shall we go up or shall we not? And he answered and said, Go and prosper, for the Lord hath delivered it into thine hand to the hand of the king. Now Ahab knew that Micaiah always spoke things evil about him, because he was an evil king. But now Micaiah says, Oh yeah, go on up and prosper. He's being sarcastic. He's being facetious. Oh, yeah, go on up. Go on up prosper. The Lord delivered to your hand. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that you tell me nothing but that which is, uh, but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And he says, verse 17, I saw Israel scattered upon the hill as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no shepherd. Let them return every man to his own house in peace. Verse 18, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would, not prophesy, he would prophesy no good concerning me, but, ev but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and the host of heaven standing by him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he shall go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And the one said on this mountain, and the other on this manner. And there came forth a lying spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade, thou shalt persuade, uh, a, uh, shall persuade him uh, and prevail also, you know, go. So, so here it is. So Ahab is saying the dogs are going to lick your blood in one place, and now Micaiah is coming along and saying, you know what? You're going to fall at Ramoth Gilead. You're going to fall at Ramoth Gilead. Now Ahab's hearing two things. Ahab is hearing you're going to die over here, 
and you're going to die over here. Now, if we look at a map, it really, it really helps, helps the situation. Ramoth Gilead, Ramoth Gilead is, is up here. All right, here's Ramoth Gilead. And Micaiah is saying, yeah, the Lord said, go on up and, and uh, go to Ramoth Gilead because you're going to fall there. You're going to fall at Ramoth Gilead. Elijah said the dogs are going to lick your blood back down here. This is Samaria or Jezreel. All right? Now that's, I, I don't know, that's, that's probably, I'd say 60 miles maybe, 40 miles, 40, 50 miles. So you're saying one prophet is saying you're going to die here, and another prophet is saying you're going to die here. That's what he's hearing. Now, friends, don't you think that he felt something? Don't you think that his mind was telling him, wait, one verse, we'll say it this way, one verse is saying, this is where I'm going to die. Another verse is saying, this is where I'm going to die. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to listen to this verse. I'm going to listen to Elijah. We know that because he goes on up. Now, friends, how is that any different? How is that any different from somebody saying, well, here's John 3, 16. It says, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And here's another verse over there that says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Both verses say believe, but I'm going to take, uh, and one verse says be baptized, so I'm going to take the verse that says believe. Friends, you've got to put them together because this is what Ahab did. Ahab, Ahab thought, well, you know what? There's a contradiction here. There's a contradiction because Micaiah said you're going to follow Ramoth Gilead, and Elijah said the dog's going to lick your blood. Uh where they lick Naboth's blood. And man, they're miles and miles apart. I can't die at two places. So I'm going to believe one and not the other. Now, friends, do you think for a minute, do you think for a minute that, uh, that Ahab stopped to think, you know what, I might be letting my emotions carry me away because I really want to go up and take Ramoth Gilead. I really want to go up and fight. I really want to go to battle, but I'm afraid because Micaiah just said, I'm going to follow Ramoth Gilead. Do you, do you think he let his emotions take over? I know he did, friends, because he said, you know what? Elijah told me I'm going to, the dog's going to lick my blood where they lick Naboth's blood. So I can go on up to Ramoth Gilead because, man, that's, that's a long, far away. As a matter of fact, the best thing for me to do is get as far away from where the dogs lick Naboth's blood as I can. Because if that's where I'm going to die, the best thing for me to do is leave. Now, sometimes that's how people think. But friends, do you think he thought there was a contradiction? Do you think he said, well, I'm going to take one, not the other? That's exactly what we're talking about. That's exactly the kind of mentality we're talking about. Because he let his emotions and his feelings cloud the facts from before his eyes. Because you know what happened? You know what happened? He went up to Ramoth Gilead. He went up to Ramoth Gilead, and here's what happened. Notice this. <clears throat> uh, he goes up to Ramoth Gilead, and... Uh, so the king, in uh, verse 25, verse 29, and the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of uh, Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle and put on thy robes, and the, but, put, but put thou upon thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now, let me tell you something. I, I think he's giving some thought to what Micaiah said because... He's trying to disguise himself. Friends, you just can't get around the truth. If God said something's going to happen, it's going to happen. So he's, he's disguised himself. Now let's look at verse 31. And the king of Syria commanded his 30 and two captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. That's all you fight with. You find the king of Israel and you fight him. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. 
and they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, <laughs> Jehoshaphat cried out. Uh, and it came to pass that when the captains of the uh, chariots perceived it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. So I don't know what Jehoshaphat did, but he must scream like a little girl, you know, he's like, you know, I'm not the king of Israel. I don't know what he said, but, you know, he's running like a little girl. I mean, they think he's the king, but he, nope, not him. So they turned around and quit pursuing him. Verse 34, and a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints and the harness. Therefore, he said unto the driver of the chariot, <coughs> turn, turn thy head and carry me out of the heat, for I am wounded. I, out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians and died at even, and the blood of the wound ran out into the midst of the chariot. Now look at this, verse 36. And there went out a proclamation throughout all the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. So the king died. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood, and they washed his armor according to the word of the Lord, which he spake. Uh, which he spake. Now, you see, Ahab thought he could get around it. He thought, well, this can't be true. Although I just said the dogs are going to lick my blood here. I'm going to die in Samaria. I'm going to go to Ramoth Gilead. But the fact of the matter is, he fell at Ramoth Gilead. He died at Ramoth Gilead. And the dog licked his blood in Samaria. Just like the Lord said. Now friends, here's my point. You can't go on feelings and say, well, I think one thing, this is true and this can't be true. Friends, is it the case that both of them can be true? See, you can't let feelings, you can't let feelings cloud your judgment about what's true and what's not true. Listen, Paul, Paul felt he had this feeling, the Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, he had this feeling. In Acts 23, verse 1, he thought, he felt, you might say, that persecuting the church was right. Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Many brethren, I have lived in all good conscience uh, before God unto this day. He said, I, I, Look, here, here's, what, here's what I did. Acts 26, Acts 26 and verse 9. He said, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing also I did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, uh, having received authority from the chief captain, chief priest. Uh, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them off in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and bring uh, and being exceedingly mad against them I persecuted them even in the strange cities he thought he was doing right he, he, he thought I ought to do it now friends you think he felt he was right he felt he was right he felt this is, this is the truth now, friends what I'm trying to get you to realize is you may feel like you're saved you may feel like what you're doing is right. You may feel like you've been told right. You may feel like you're in a good standing with God. You may feel like you worship God in spirit and truth. You may feel a lot of things, but friends, feelings can mislead you. Feelings cannot replace facts. Feelings can't replace truth. So how do you know? That's really what we're getting to know. How do you know that the way of salvation that you have been taught or what you've been told is the way of salvation, how do you know that's the truth? You're trying, you're trying to find a way to have your sins forgiven. How do you know that's the truth? Look, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, Romans 10, 9 and 10, 
Paul said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart thou, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you believe that that's, that's what you must do to be saved? Do you believe that's it, period? See, you know, well, Paul is an apostle. He's not telling me, that, he's not telling me a lie. Oh, I, I agree. He's an apostle. And he's not saying something that's not true. But, but Elijah was a prophet. He was telling the truth, and so was Micaiah telling the truth. And they may have seemingly given contradictory advice or instructions, but they were both right. And the Apostle Paul is saying that these folks had confessed with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and had believed in the heart that God had raised them from the dead in order to be saved. Notice this. For with the heart men believed unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made in salvation. Now, is that what you have to do to be saved? Well, that's not the only thing you have to do to be saved. See, there's a difference. Saying this is something a person must do to be saved, there's a difference in saying that and saying this is all a person has to do to be saved. So how do you know? See, how do you know it's the truth? Well, someone told me that. Well, but did they tell you the rest? Did they tell you anything else? Was there more information that was being given? Someone's going to say, well, but the Bible says, for whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So therefore you just say a little prayer. Now, wait a minute, friends. Is that really what the Bible's saying? Is that really what the Bible is saying about being saved? See, you have this feeling because, oh, I did that. And I don't know how many times I've talked to people, they say, well, I did that. Oh, I did that. I did that. But friends, I can assure you, you didn't do what the Bible says if you didn't know that doing what the Bible says gets you to a certain place and puts you in a certain relationship with God. See, when people tell me, well, I did that, it's usually because they just found out what the Bible says you have to do. If I was to read them, Acts 10, 13, and it says, Whosoever call the name of the Lord shall be saved, they say, Oh, I did that. I called the name of the Lord to be saved. Well, what did you do then? Oh, I said a prayer. I, I said a prayer. I called on the Lord and I said, Lord, forgive my sins. I, I believe you're Jesus. Friends, that's not what calling on the name of the Lord means. See? You may have been told that. And you may have had a good feeling about saying that little prayer. But friends, that's not what brings salvation. Acts 2 and verse 21. Acts 2 and 21. And it shall come to pass, and whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that what you did? All right, not lighting up in here. Is that what you did? Friends, you have, you have to be certain based upon facts, not feelings. Someone says, well, I call the name of the Lord. Well, show me what calling on the name of the Lord is saying a prayer. Show me, show me the facts. See that? Show me the facts. See that little, little fox on TV, you know, little car, car commercial, whatever? Just the facts. Show us the facts. Show us the facts about your salvation. In Acts 2 and verse 38, Acts 2 and verse 38, they said, Many brethren, what shall we do to be saved? What shall we do? And Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Now, friends, these are seemingly contradictions. One says, uh, Confess with your mouth, believe with your heart, confess with your mouth. Another one says, Call the name of the Lord to be saved. And then one says, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Now, which one is it? How about all of them? How about they're all the truth? How about you have to do all of them? See, friends, it's just like Elijah and Micaiah telling two different, seemingly contradicting uh, bits of information concerning Ahab's death and Ahab picking one and saying, well, you know what? I just don't think that's right. I think I'm going to go up to Ramoth Gilead. Even though I was told I'm going to fall there, but I also know that Elijah said the dogs are going to lick my blood over here, so I'm going to chance going up there. 
Now, just to make sure, I'm going to disguise myself. Friends, you can't trick, you can't trick the Lord. You can't trick yourself, trick, trick yourself into salvation. You do what the Lord says based upon the facts, and you don't have to rely on feelings. Well, I hope, I think, I believe, I might, I felt that it was right. You just don't have to do that. You just don't have to do that. Feelings are misleading. Feelings are misleading. Feelings can uh, cloud your judgment, if you will. <clears throat> Listen to this. Someone says, well, I, I know, I know that I'm right. I know that, that the church I'm in is right. Listen, friends, the reason why I know so many people who think or who have these feelings that they're right aren't right is because when they tell me what they did to be saved and they tell me the feelings they had or the, the thoughts they had or the beliefs they had and so forth, when they tell me that, then... They tell me where they wound up. Friends, you cannot obey the wrong gospel and get into the right church because obeying the gospel always puts you in the Lord's church. <clears throat> and too many people think that they're saved. Too many people think they're saved in a man-made church. Now listen to what this lady says. This is... Pretty old phone call. Listen to what she says. She's going to be talking about her brother and how well he knew the Bible. You know what does the Bible say? Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. I had a brother that was a primitive Baptist minister and passed away about eight years ago. And I think if there's anyone on earth ever went to heaven, I think he did, and is at risk. <clears throat> and and that, can primitive Baptist go to heaven, or is it just this one member of these churches? Well, well, ma'am, I'd ask you this: Is the can you find the primitive Baptist church in the Bible? Well, I, I don't know, but I mean, he was a menace, and he preached the Bible. Well, I, I, and, I, and I believe that, but, but the fact is, the Bible says there's only one church, and in, in that church is the what you must be in in order to get to heaven. Bible, you can mention yeah. any scripture, and he could just pick the Bible up and open it, and ask how many times he said you have read through the Bible, and he could tell you anywhere or anything when you questioned him in the Bible. Well, I, I, and I believe that too, but you know what? And, and with all due respect... The devil can quote scripture. So simply knowing the Bible, does that make someone say? Well, at the end of life of all of us, then it's not going to be anyone there in heaven that just, just, just you want a church of Christ that you're talking about in that book? I'm saying, I'm saying there, is a, there is a church in this book. It is the church of Christ. And the only way you're going to get to heaven is if you're in this. Now let me say this. Not every member of the Church of Christ is going to make it to heaven. But the only way you're going to get to heaven is if you're in the Church of Christ. Does that make sense? I don't know. It just makes sense that I know this. <laughs> he read his Bible. Because he preached the Bible. Friends, there's a lot of people that preach the Bible. I, I, I believed her. I believed the lady when she said, my brother preached the Bible. I believed it. There's a lot of people pick up the Bible and they'll, and they'll preach it. You know what, friend? Picking up the Bible and preaching does not guarantee that you did what the Lord said. Jesus said, many will say them that day, Lord, Lord, should I enter and have the kingdom of heaven? But whoso doeth the will of my Father. Now, friends, there's only one church you read about in this book. It's the Church of Christ. And today, on this side of the cross, there's only one church you can, you can be a member of and have a hope of eternal life in heaven. And that's the Lord's church. That's the church of Christ. Why? Because the facts. 
the facts. The facts are, Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, Matthew 16, 18. The facts are, Jesus said, or Paul said, that, that Christ is the Savior of the body. Ephesians 5 and verse 23. He's the head of the church and he's the Savior of the body. That's a fact. The fact. Christ has a church. He built it. Fact. He's the Savior of the body. Fact. The church is the body of Christ. And fact. If you want to be saved, you have to be a part of the body that Christ is going to save fact, there is not a man-made church in the Bible that Christ is going to save. Now, friends, you can feel all you want to. You can have these warm fuzzies and you can think, I believe, I feel, I just know, I just know. Friends, she didn't know. If you know, if you know that someone in the primitive Baptist church is going to be in heaven, then show it to me in the Bible. Because this is how we know the will of God. The way we know the will of God is we open up this book. We open up this book that reveals the mind of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, look at this. As it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Friends, if you want to know the mind of God, the will of God, you want to know what God thinks, right here it's in this book. These are the facts. And feelings, friends, will not guarantee. Feelings do not guarantee that you're right. I would, be, I would be scared, friends, to stand on the judgment day. I would be afraid to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and tell God, well, I just, I just feel, I just feel that I'm right. I just, I just feel like I should be here. I, I, just, I just feel like I should get to go in. Friends, do you see how silly that is? Do you realize how, how crazy that is? Let me tell you. Do you think your child, now some of you might think this, I don't know. But do you think your child goes to school and your child didn't study for a test? He, he doesn't know anything that's in that book. He doesn't know anything that's in his history book or his math book or his science book. He didn't study a lick. He didn't do his homework. And the day, and the day for the test comes in and he goes up to the teacher, well, I just feel like I should get 100 on this test. What do you think the teacher's going to say? Fail. You failed because you didn't know. You didn't open the book. It's going to be a lot worse on the day of judgment. You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the word from the Lord. Hey. Hey. Preachers on there. I'm sorry? And uh, we got them straightened out. My pastor, he knows how to straighten them out. And he got them where they don't believe in, uh, he can straighten them out and he can show them how to be saved without being baptized. What, what's his name? Save, save eternally. And they were saved but one time what, on this side what, of eternity. What's his uh, name? What's, what's your preacher's name? You know his name. That boy knows his name. They've been down there. He talked to him. Oh, okay. He, he straightened him out. They won't say nothing else oh, to him. Freedom Baptist. You're talking about the Freedom Baptist in uh, Henry County. You, you're talking about in, in, uh, in Henry County, Martinsville? There are, several, there are several Freedom Baptists around here. But you're talking about the one in Henry County? 
Sir? Hello? What, what's, what's the Baptist preacher over his name? This guy, this man won't tell him, won't say his name. Luffman? What's his name? All right. Uh, now, he's, he set his preacher straight and Micah and Caleb out. I guess that's what you're talking about. Friends, I can assure you one thing. Uh, the, the, fo- the video footage and the, the audio footage and things that, uh, that the Freedom Baptist preacher, I can't think of his name uh, right now, if someone can call it for me, uh, that they showed and that they demonstrated it is so, it was so unreal. It's contrary to what he says. That man couldn't show you, come here from Sikkim. Let me tell you. The Baptist church is not in the Bible. Sir, why, why do not your preacher show you the Baptist church in the Bible? See that? It's not in there. I can't think of his name right now. It, I'm thinking it's Arthur L. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, so, so friends, let me tell you something. That right there shows you the power of the gospel. When someone says, well, here's facts. My preacher can show you the truth, but your preacher can't show you the Baptist church in the Bible. So, anyway, bottom line, all right, here we go, back here. Here we go. You're on the word from the Lord? Hello, how you doing? I'm doing fine. You got about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. Okay, well, that's not long. I'll call back on next time. What, what time do you come on next time? We come on at 9 o'clock on Thursday nights. Okay, I'll call back on Thursday nights. Okay, all right, all right. Thanks for the thanks for call. Thanks for watching. All right. Uh, we might have had a little more than 30 seconds, but I'm looking at this. I, I don't really think I do now. Uh, but anyway, friends, this just shows you that a man calls up and says, well, my preacher can show you the truth, but yet he can't show you the, the church he's in. He can't show you the churches in, so why would I believe that his preacher can show me the truth when the preacher won't want him to show this man the church that he's in? So I'm talking about you can see the truth. That's like Ahab. Ahab heard the truth. He heard the truth, and then he still rejected it. Friends, don't be that person. Don't, don't base them on feelings or, you know, get the facts. Facts from the Word of God to build up your faith. Faith comes by hearing by the Word of God. We're out of time, friends. You can reach me, James Oldfield, at wordfromthelord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653. If we can assist you in any way, we want to do that very thing. Always remember to ask what does the Bible say, and you get a word from the Lord.